What is up, Lighthouse Middle School? How you guys doing? Hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. It is the first Wednesday of May. We are almost done with school, and I'm sure you guys are all thrilled about that. Just a few more weeks left. You can totally do this. You can finish strong. I believe in you. Summer is almost here. Um, and with summer almost being here, that means that we got to celebrate the end of the school year. You got to celebrate the end of middle school ministry with a big old party. So we are doing our Splash Bash. So this will be on Wednesday, May 15th. That's in two weeks. Uh, you will come here to the church, six o'clock. We will have dinner and then you're going to want to wear like a shirt that you don't mind if it gets a little wet and or messy maybe like a swimsuit athletic shorts that you don't care about your oldest pair of shoes or crocs or whatever stuff that you don't mind if it gets a little bit wet and or messy and we're going to play a bunch of messy games together this is a great time we've loved it the past few years so you're definitely not going to want to miss it uh, we'll go from six to eight uh again wednesday may 15th in two weeks here at church send off the school year right with Splash Bash. And speaking of summer and moving into our summer schedule, uh, your parents should be getting that schedule maybe this week. I think I'm going to sending, try to be sending it out this week. Um, but one of the things we're doing this summer is our day camps. We've done these the past few years. This will be in June. Um, it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and uh, we get together during the day, you go home at night, you come back, um, and it's kind of like a little fun retreat. We spend a lot, we do a lot of really fun things. We also have some teaching, and at the teaching times, I want to answer your questions. So usually I give you like a topic, right? Um, but this time, anything to do with God, or spirituality, or relationships, wisdom, the Bible, whatever it is, whatever questions you have about your walk with the Lord, ask those questions. Uh, submit them to this QR code. Again, it's anonymous, so... Um, if you want to put your name, you can. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, and I will answer as many as I can at our day camps um, to hopefully make it really interesting and engaging for you guys and help you in your walk with the Lord to answer our questions uh, with God's word. So uh, submit your questions. Also sign up for day camps. That'll be coming up pretty soon. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, and with that out of the way, we're going to get into our final lesson or final series for this year. So like I said, this is the first week of our new series, I Am, where we will explore Jesus' great love. Now, of course, we all love to hear from someone we love that they love us. Maybe it's a shout out. Maybe it's a private and a personal interaction where they say that they love you. Maybe it's in a text. Maybe they send you an encouraging note in the mail. I don't know if you've ever gotten that before, but it's kind of awesome. Um, those are all ways that we hear and receive love from our friends, family, from the people that care about us. And hearing, um, of course, is sound, and sound is actually a physical thing. That's why if it is loud enough, we can actually sometimes feel it in our bodies. Maybe you've been to a concert before and it's really loud and you've felt it. Uh, most of the time, we can't see sound with our eyes, but in certain situations, we can. Check this out. The first experiment for the Cymatics music video is called a Cladney plate. Now, Cladney plate is basically a metal plate attached to the top of a speaker. There's sand on top of the plate, and you play different tones through the speaker. The plate vibrates, which forms different shapes depending on the frequency of the sound. Well, we blew up a lot of speakers um, with the with the Cladney plate. So there was a lot of experimenting around the Cladney plate, primarily looking at how much volume we can put through there, how much sand to actually put on the plate, and the different shapes of plates and what different patterns would be created because of those shapes. Um, but what we were really testing was what frequencies create the most interesting repeatable patterns, because that was a key point. So we ended up playing pretty much every audio frequency through the plate to see what different shapes it would form. And for most frequencies, it doesn't really do much, but when it hits a frequency that resonates with the plate, it forms a really nice pure shape. So we found out what those tones were, and those were the tones we used to dry the plate during the video. Now, this helps us to see that our physical environment changes when someone speaks. 
So when someone tells us who they are, in a way, they are kind of altering the air and the environment around them, and reality is changing a little bit, which is pretty cool. And this is just another way, I guess, of emphasizing why listening to people is so important. And also why it can be such a bummer if we don't listen to what they say about themselves. Uh, What they wanted us to know about them, it actually kind of altered the air a little bit, and they changed the reality around us, and we still managed to miss it because we weren't paying attention. Now, today, we're going to look at a few things that don't seem like they go together at first. Sound, shepherds, and sheep. It would be totally fair if you are unfamiliar with a lot of those things, but we're going to gauge where we all are with a little activity. We're going to do some true or false questions, okay? True or false. Uh, The sound a sheep makes is called a burp. The sound a sheep makes is called a burp. True or false? Shout out your answer. True or false? Three, two, one. That is false. It's called a bleat. Okay. Uh, Next one. The scientific name for sound waves is called a longitudinal wave. Okay. The scientific name for sound waves is called a longitudinal wave. True or false? Submit your answers. Three, two, one. That is true. It's called a longitudinal wave. Pretty interesting. Okay, final one here. Studies show that sheep are even able to recognize human faces and voices. Studies show that sheep are even able to recognize human faces and voices. Is that true or false? Shout out your answer. Three, two, one. That is true. That's pretty awesome, right? So, we don't need a poll to tell us that it's tricky to sort through what is true and what is false in our world. When figuring out what's true, it's important to go to the source. And the same is true when figuring out what is true about Jesus. What if we actually let Jesus tell us and show us who he is? Whether you've grown up in church or maybe this is your first time, the place to start understanding Jesus is by allowing him to tell us who he is through the Bible, through his words. Now, uh, the reality is that we all want to be known. Sometimes we spend our lives feeling like nobody knows us. We try, but maybe it feels like nobody's listening. Even so, we want to be known for the right things. You want to be known for what you care about, what you stand for, who you love, right? And the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are about Jesus' life. They help us know who he is, what he cared about, what he stood for, and what he loved, give us his teaching. They're the stories of where Jesus lived, what he did, where he visited, his conversations, the miracles he performed, and of course, most importantly, his death and resurrection. One of the books in the Bible we find in the New Testament is a book called John, and one of its central themes is, in fact, love. The author, John, was a disciple of Jesus and followed him on a three-year adventure doing ministry together. And in John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18, he recounts a parable where Jesus gave us insight into who he is. So let's read this together. Starting on page 668. Okay, so big number 10, starting at small number one. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and they come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. They follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They're going to run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, and my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. He will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him, because he isn't their shepherd, and so the wolf attacks them and then scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. 
just as my father knows me and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. And the father loves me because I sacrifice my life so I may take it back again. No one can take away my life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have the authority to lay it down when I want to and also to take it up again. For this is what my father has commanded. So this is something that Jesus wants us to know about himself. He tells us that he loves his sheep so much and he cares about them so much that he would die for them. He's the good shepherd who wants his sheep to have a full life and is willing to give his life for them to make that possible. Jesus runs after his sheep and even when they have run away from him, he continues to love them. Now, just as the good shepherd protects, guides, and gives his life for the sheep, Jesus gave his life for us at the cross. Just a few pages further on page 673, we're looking for big number 15, starting in small number 9. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I've told you these things so you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends, like Jesus does for us. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. But you are my friends since I have told you everything that the Father told me. When we hear Jesus tell us that he loves us, this sound wave of love can change our reality. We're no longer servants, but friends invited to follow Jesus, become more like him, loving others and ourselves as he does. We all want to know that we are loved, cared for, and protected by someone. And thankfully, when we let Jesus tell us who he is and what he does, we hear that we are loved and that we are capable of loving each other. Through the cross and resurrection, we see that Jesus laid down everything to ensure that we have the possibility of life and life to the full. And this is possible only because Jesus is love. So what would it mean for you today to know that you have the good shepherd calling out for you amidst all of the voices and the noise? That is where you are. Here's how you can respond to that love today. We can accept Jesus' love. It is available to you today. His love is a gift and not dependent on who you are or what you've done. The gift is paid for and given to you. When you come to Jesus, you can experience the transforming power of his unconditional love. It starts with a simple prayer that you can say anytime. It might look like this. It might say, thank you for loving me even when I don't deserve it. I want your love to transform my heart and I embrace the love that you have for me, the forgiveness of my sins. Next, we can focus on Jesus' love. Spend maybe five minutes every day this week focusing on Jesus' love, allowing it to be the center of your attention. Maybe you've been stuck hearing what others think about you, how many likes, followers, or comments you have on social media, or who was invited to that party that maybe you weren't. Maybe you place your value on your strengths, your talents, your mistakes, your weaknesses, but that's not who you are. You can love because you know your importance, who you are and whose you are if you are in Christ. In that five minutes, say, you know what, I'm a loved child of God, and his love for me is unconditional. Follow Jesus and allow his love to be what centers and motivates the things that you do. And then finally, you can share about Jesus' love. Another way to reflect on Jesus' transforming love is to simply talk about it with your friends, with your family, with your uh, teammates, right? Share with others how God's love has impacted your life. And Jesus loves you. Not what you can be, but who you are. The love Jesus offers sees past your sin and fights for you. The true depth and breadth of Jesus' love for us might often sit like an unread text on our phones. We see the first part, but we never click to really see the rest of it, all of what that text might contain. What if today is kind of like clicking on that text and seeing the rest of it? Do you want to leave that good love for you, that good message that Jesus is the good shepherd who sacrifices his life for the sheep unread? I don't think so. Love humbles itself to bless others. Love willingly 
gives it all away. Love will risk his life and die to provide you with eternal life. Jesus has spoken to you and told you how much he loves you because Jesus is love. Uh, that's what I've got for you guys this evening. We're going to switch it over to small groups. I love you guys. I'll see you when I see you.